Hey everybody, it's Miss Jakin and I am the 4-H agent for Emanuel County and today I am going to be doing a little tutorial on how to do a mini booth for the 4-H contest for the Southeast Georgia JC Fair. I am going to be going over just the mini booth competition itself. I'm going to show you some examples and then I'm going to show you a neat little way that you can use your computer and Google Slides to do a fair booth um, to be able to enter it in the JC Fair. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to share my screen with you and the first thing I want you to see is um, the mini booth competition brochure that we have here, or this is the entire fair booth competition brochure. Um, and um, if you'll look at it this year, we're going to be having, of course, our mini booth competition, but we're also going to be having our gourd decorating contest and our photography contest. But today we're going to be focusing on the mini booth competition. So to be able to enter the competition, the first thing you have to do is fill out your registration form. And um, these will be given out in club meetings and this brochure is also available on our Facebook group. Um, you can download it as a PDF and print it. Um, and there's also a link to be able to register for our fair contests online. So in the brochure, it has all of the rules, the important dates that you need to know for the contest, and it also gives you a few tips and things. Um, but some of the most important things I want to touch on today um, is first and foremost for the mini booth contest is you cannot use the cardboard trifold display boards like you use for projects at school. So um, for the mini booth competition, um, do not use trifold boards. The most popular thing that's used is um, a piece, uh, three pieces of poster board, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. Um, we don't want you to recycle any old um, exhibits that you may have had in the past or that a sibling or a friend may have used in the past. Um, if you're going to um, reuse any of that stuff, any of the information or any of your props and things that would go in the bottom, um, you do need to change it up and make it different. We don't want it to be something that you just took out of last year's booth and then stuck back in there again this year. Um, you do have to register with the extension office before entering your mini booth into the fair. Um, we have to know how many people are coming and we have to have the spots assigned. So you do have to register and you do that online um, with the link on our Facebook group or you can do it um, by again filling out this little um, sheet here on the registration form and you just cut it out so you can keep your rules and your deadlines and everything important that you need to know um, and turn in that registration form to us. Um, mini booths have to be entered into the fair on Sunday, August, I mean October the 18th from 2 to 5 or on Monday, October the 19th from 3 until 6. So you can enter your mini booth either of those two days um, and have everything set up. The fair begins on October the 20th. The booths are judged on the morning of Tuesday, October the 20th. So things have to be in place by Monday evening at 6. Um, that's when we put um, the, the covers up on the fronts of the booths. Um, we place the ribbons on Tuesday morning, um, early afternoon, and then once the fair opens, the ribbons and everything in the booth have to stay there um, until the end of the fair when you pick your mini booths on, up on Sunday, October the 25th from 2 to 5 p.m. Um, if you remove any of your materials before Sunday, October 25th, you do forfeit any prize money that you would have won. We want these booths to remain on display during the duration of the fair. Um, this also has the space um, requirements for the booth. Um, and while it is printed here, we're going to go over it a little bit more in just a minute, but they're 23 inches deep. 
31 inches wide and 24 inches high. Um, because they are um, wooden boots and they're put together, put together with hinges, sometimes we get a little bit of variance on the size. So don't make your booth where it has to fit exactly to those dimensions. And what I mean is don't put together like a cardboard box that you're gonna to expect to just slide into these booths. Um, you may have a little bit of variance that may not be perfectly square. So best practice is to use three pieces of poster board that you can then, um, we provide staple guns and staples. You can staple them up to the wooden booths, but don't expect to make a perfectly square box and slide it into the booth space. Um, you're also going to want to use a disposable um, tablecloth or wrapping paper, bulletin board paper, or even fabric to put on your booth before attaching um, your poster boards, just because as you can see in this one picture up here at the top, um, you will have some spaces that show between your posters. So having a solid color or something that coordinates not just the plywood showing there through your, um, through your booth. Um, and then lastly, anything that you put into your booth, the extension office is not going to be responsible for. So don't put anything that is really valuable to you personally or if it's really expensive. Um, while it's rare that we've ever had anything tampered with. I mean, the fact of the matter is it is a public place. People are coming and going. We do put um, covers across the front of these booths, but no one is there watching them all the time. So um, put things in there to make it look good. But again, don't put anything that you would be very distraught if something were to happen to it. Um, the next thing I want to share with you is some examples of some fair booths. And um, I have all kinds of examples that I want to share. Um, the first one of these is this um, chess fair booth. And it's a good example because um, it has pictures, it does have a floor display, um, and they used the Ed, um, Ellison machine to cut out their letters. Um, to put into their fair booth. You can see they backed all of their information and their pictures with um, construction paper um, and um, the, or maybe even poster board. But this is done kind of in what I call the, the old school way of doing mini booths of where you actually cut out paper, you cut out pictures and cut out information. You attach them to a poster board and then you can see here even in this picture, they've stapled up their poster board to the mini booth sides. And like I said a while ago, um, these booths are not perfectly square. Or You can see right here, there's this little block of wood. So they made it where they could trim their booth to conform to anything like that. So just be aware that there is a chance in your booth you might have something like that, or you could have the booth where it has the hinge in the front to help hold that piece of plexiglass cover. So um, just be kind of flexible with how you plan to put your um, stuff in your booth. I wanted to share this one because this is an, a good example of just a simple booth, but they took their information, which was um, sea turtles. They used sand in the bottom. They built a little sea turtle nest. Um, protection uh, fence kind of thing. And then it's hard to tell in this picture, but they had painted their posters to make them look like the ocean. So um, one recommendation I might have for this one is that their information was really small. So be aware of that your audience is going to be a foot or two away from your exhibit. You want to make sure that your information is big enough um, that they can read it standing, you know, a couple of feet away from your booth. I wanted to share this one because it is an awesome example of someone that utilized their entire space and they built um, an awesome um, floor display for this booth. So it's obviously on the American alligator and they built um, or constructed an alligator habitat. They used um, fake plants and moss and they even got a little 
um, body of water right here. But this is, like I said, a great example of making their booth and their information three-dimensional. They're using the entire part of their booth, the walls, um, the back, and again, um, the floor space. And this one is a great example. Um, this was a cloverleaf booth, which is a fourth through sixth grade. Um, and this is just to show you, you do not have to do your stuff on the computer. You don't have to use the Ellison machine. It can be handwritten. And this is, I think one thing the judges loved about this is that it was obvious that the 4-H'er had done the work. So it's obviously on the solar system. They've got their information here. Um, you can tell that the 4-H'er um, put forth effort and did this as neat as, as neatly as they could. Um, they also have a nice little floor display here with all of their little um, models that they made and they're clearly labeled um, and where they can be seen. Um, from a foot or two away. And they have used, um, looks like fabric or felt to um, cover their booth. So that's another good example of, you know, where they don't have their information and where they don't have a floor display, they still have covered up that area and they have decorated it um, to be a part of their booth. And lastly, this is an example of um, they have used our online template, which I'm going to share in just a minute, to put their um, information. Um, they have typed it out. It's big. You could see it standing a foot away, a foot or two away from the booth. Um, the pictures are big enough to see. They also have a variety of um, materials in their floor display. They have used fabric and um, bulleted board paper, or maybe that's fabric as well, um, in their booth. They have um, materials in here to give height to their stuff. And then, you know, it's just, it's attractive. It goes along with their theme um, and everything in here uh, goes along with the booth. There's nothing in here that's just there to, you know, to take up space. Um, one suggestion I would make is to always be aware that you will have items in the floor for the floor display. So be careful not to have your information so down far that your props are covering those items up. So over here, they did a good job of in their list. They didn't cover up any of those items. Their picture's not blocked here, but then on this side of the booth, um, some, of, some of their words and things are covered up. So that's, sometimes you just got to be aware, and that comes with practice too of doing bare boots. Um, you know that up to a certain point, you could have things that could cover it up. So those were all examples of things that you can do. Um, for a fair booth to make it look good. And the next thing that I want to share is a way that you can do a um, you can do your fair booth on the computer. Um, so sometimes it's hard for parents and 4 Hers to come by our office to use the Ellis machine or they don't have um, you know time to cut things out and glue them down. So we've come up with a way for you to use Google Slides or PowerPoint to help you put your booth together. And there's a few different ways that you can get the template. Um, the easiest one though that I've come up with um, is I have set up a Google Classroom that you can join. Um, I have two. I have one that you can join if you have an Emanuel County School System email address and then I have another one that you can join if you have um, just any Gmail address and those are free if you don't have one it's easy just to set one up. But what I'm going to do is actually join the classroom um, so I can show you um, how easy it is. Um, but the first thing you'll have to do is you're going to go to classroom.google.com. Um, and when you do that, it's going to take you to, um, let me see, this site, and I'm going to switch to my personal Gmail. So you go to, to Google Classroom and um, 
unless you're a student um, in the school system, you probably won't have any classrooms yet. But to join the classroom, you're going to go to the little plus up here, click on join class. And if you email me or text me or call me or whatever you need to do, I can give you the class code to be able to join the class. Um, and we're going to start today with just the public one. All right, so once I've put my code in there, all I have to do is click join. Um, let me see. Let me go to the other one. So if you try to join um, the school classroom with just a regular Gmail, it's not going to let you do it. Um, so let me put this other one in here. Okay, now I'm going to join. And when this opens up, it's going to add me to the classroom. And the way that I've set this classroom up is that everyone who joins is automatically going to be given a copy of the Fairbooth template. So as it's loading, all right, so you can see here that it has given me an assignment. So you're going to click on classwork. And it's going to say create a mini booth for the Southeast Georgia Fair. You are going to click on view assignment. And it has given you your own copy of the fair booth template. So you can make any changes that you want. Um, and it's going to save as you go. So every change that you make, um, it's saving that in Google Drive. So I'm going to walk you through the template. Um, and the first page of it is some examples of um, some past mini booths for you to see. It's also got some instructions already set up here. So these templates are preset to the correct dimensions. Um, so you don't need to change them at all. Um, all you have to do is go in here and edit your um, posters that will be put into your fair booth. Um, so down here at the bottom, um, it's got uh, some kind of basic instructions for you um, that you can see. Um, we've told the students that have done this in the past that it's like a report in a box. So you want enough information that somebody could stand there, read for one to two minutes, know what you're talking about and go on to the next thing. You don't want to have several paragraphs worth of information in your fair booth. But um, your booth is going to have three sides, just like these pictures have. One of those three sides is going to be your title poster. So we have a um, example here of um, on the template that you could take and fill out um, to be whatever it is uh, that you're planning to do your booth on. And you want to make it something that is catchy. So if I was doing my fair booth on how to take care of a dog, don't just call it dog care. Come up with something um, a little more uh, snazzy, a little more attention grabbing. Um, and we have a little um, box here to show where a photo or where some clip art could go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to insert image. You can upload from your computer if you already have some photos or clip art saved to your computer, but I'm going to use this search the web option. And what that does um, is it's going to search for words that match um, that. And these have a, a free light or they're license free. So that means that you can use these for non-commercial purposes um, to, you know, for education or for like our fair booth. So these photos are fine to use for this. Um, and when you click on it, it automatically moves it over here. One important thing to know about um, 
using pictures and images on here is you want to make sure that you grab at the corners to resize it that way because if you grab from the side to try to make it smaller it's going to stretch that picture or if you try to grab here to make it bigger it's going to smush it and make it real tall so um, you want to make sure that you always grab from the corners to resize it and that makes it stay the correct dimensions um, to change the font all you have to do is highlight it you can come over here select another font that you like make sure it's one that is easy to read um, some of these um, a little are a little bit harder to read like in my opinion when you have all capital letters sometimes the, the words tend to run together and it's hard to read it so just find something that um, is uh, easy to read it's clear um, and that can be seen from you know a foot or two away so as part of this template we have the um, one that you can edit and change and then there's also like an example there so it says here example of a title poster fonts easy to read the picture pertains to the subject and the title is catchy um, so we also have that for our information posters um, that will be going on either side of our booth now Again, this is just a template, so that means that it's just an example of what it can look like and what it can contain. So if you're going to do like the doll care, um, you would come up with three different you know, main ideas or topics that fall within that subject, and then you'd find some more details about each of those. Um, you can also add a picture or some more clip art. You don't have to put all three main ideas um, on one poster you can spread it out remember you've got two sides that you can use you also have your floor display so you could put more information in the floor um, of your booth you can also have props or um, visual aids that go there but here is an example of um, an informational poster that is in the same um, in the same layout or format as that template um, just before. So I've got three different kinds of information. I've got some more specific points that go under there. Again, you can tell that it's an easy to read font. I've got some clip art that goes along with it. And one important thing to think about when you're coming up with the topic or subject for your booth is don't just think of what would, what information would be good in a booth. Actually think of, now what do I have that I can make this a three-dimensional booth. What can I put in the floor of my booth to be a visual aid, to be a prop? Are there things that I can do to draw the observer in and to really catch their attention? Because that's what that floor display does, is it holds your audience's attention and gives them something interesting to look at. So um, if you're doing something on saving in money, I mean, of course, you're not going to put any real money in your booth, although that would definitely catch everybody's attention. Think of some creative things that you can put. Um, some pamphlets from a local bank might be nice, but that's not very much, you're gonna need more. So um, a piggy bank, um, maybe some fake money, but think in terms of things that are interesting and that actually contribute to your booth and make it look better. Don't just put things in there to take up space. Um, again, if you're doing doll care, of course, you're not gonna put Fido in your mini booth, but you could put a stuffed dog in there, you could, um, put some of their food, some toys, um, some of the different items that you're naming in your fair booth that you would use to care for your dog. Those would be great examples of items that can go into um, your booth. So if you are interested in doing a fair booth, uh, you can contact me, uh, again, Jake and Tyson, if you would like to um, do a booth and I'm going to put my email address on here. You can send me an email and say that you would like to get the classroom code for um, 
for Google Classroom. You can also send me a message on Facebook if you would like to do that, if that's easier. Um, or you can call us here in the office and um, I can help you that way as well. But of course, if you have any questions, please let us know. And we look forward to seeing the really great fair booths that you guys come up with this year for the JC Fair.